Guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to touch upon uh, a topic that we introduced a couple of weeks ago, uh, which was the hitting up on the ball with the driver versus hitting down. So angle mm. of attack, positive versus negative. Um, and a follow on question that we got a lot in the comments was, well, if you can't necessarily ch make that change right. from being a, a negative kind of angle of attack player to a positive, what do you do? How yeah. do you deal with that? How do we optimize um, the negative angle of attack and get, right. get that distance back up? Yeah, because it's not, it's not always that easy for, uh, for a player to make the change that can be so ingrained in their movement patterns yep. that you just, you just hit down on it. Or maybe you get really good results. I was going to say, maybe you're really yeah. accurate with it and you just want 10 more yards out of Th your driver. That's exactly it. I mean, there's, there's certainly, you know, we've seen um, from the, the tour stats that mm. the average PJ Tour player hits down on at 1.3 degrees. Right. That is, that's the average that TrackMan shows uh, as, as the um, sort of you know, angle attack for the best players in the world. But I think one thing that will, uh, will be a factor in that, I've always thought this is, as this modern kind of you know, new generation of players is coming mm. up, I really think that's going to change. I think so too. I, they've mostly got to be hitting up on it now, the longest hitters. I think, you know, the, the generation that's coming through has, has grown up with Trackman. Yeah, right. You know, it's been, Trackman has been sort of, you know, 12, 14 years uh, in the industry right now. Mm. So, you know, Brooks Kepka, Justin Thomas, you know, this, this kind of new uh, breed of bombers that are coming through. They know the benefits yeah. of hitting up on it. So, uh, so I think that's going to be more in their sort of DNA. Whereas, yeah. You know, some of the, the sort of maybe slightly, you know, uh, previous generation were a little bit more down on it. Yeah, Tiger is a good example. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it was interesting watching uh, a little bit of the golf coverage yesterday uh, on the PGA Championships. They were talking about Adam Scott as, you know, somebody who might struggle because of the firepower that, uh, that Brooks mm. Koepka has. He might struggle to kind of keep up with him. Yeah. And, um, and, and that's not because his ball speed is, is any, really any slower. He's kind of a high 170s, even low 180s at times. Yeah. But he doesn't optimize quite no. as good. Um, no. So he's, he's a, little bit, uh, a little bit more in the down. So um, it would be a question for him. He's probably decided that he doesn't want to sacrifice, I guess, his accuracy in search of another 10 yards or 100%. whatever. That's, that's exactly uh, what that is. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I remember, you know, talking to a friend of mine who was kind of doing a little bit of work with, with Adam Scott and Justin Rose. Hmm. Um, and, and he, you know, Justin had Adam by, by you know, a, a good kind of 15, 20 yards. Really? But they were exactly the same uh, club head and ball speed. Interesting. Um, or certainly a, a frac, you know, Close around enough. the same, yeah. you know, ball speed. But club head speed was exactly the same. I remember seeing the numbers. He sent me the, the numbers to look at. But um, you know, certainly Rosie was a little bit up on it, and Adam hmm. was a little bit down on it. So there's definitely, um, you know, there's definitely players out there who are a bit more down on it. And, and we want to do a, a video and show you guys who are watching who have that sort of set of delivery uh, parameters how we can help what to do yeah. yeah so i think it'll be cool to get some ideas of what heads and what lofts maybe right. even what shafts what yep. golf balls to try yeah um to bring because we showed a massive disparity mm -hmm. between the low or the negative and the positive yep. i think it was something like 20 yards for or sure. 30 yards for sure people ask can you close the gap yeah yes you can, you can. for sure yeah well i think one thing uh, to, to get a bear in mind with all this stuff and for those people who are out there with a slightly negative angle attack it's never one thing or the other that you're looking to sort of, you know, lean on to try and make that change. It's never a shaft change or mm. a club head change. You have to, you have to look at it like, you know, everything that goes into making, right. you know, launch conditions uh, will play its own role. The ball will, the head will, the shaft will, gotcha. all those sorts of things. Okay. Okay. Right. Let's uh, let's hit a few with your gamer. I mean, we know Matt, your your gamer is optimized to you hitting slightly up on it. Yeah. So this shouldn't be that good for you hitting slightly down on it. It should lose, well, I mean, we saw, we should lose yeah. 15, 20 yards. For sure, that. yeah, without a doubt. Okay, let's All give right. it a shot. Let's do it. Hey Matty, good job. Um, so we got we got five nice solid ones there uh, with a, an average 
angled descent of about 1.7 down on it, which for you is is about a four degree change from where you normally are. At least, yeah. Uh, maybe five. Maybe you're probably what three, three, three four or so up on up, it. Yeah. So that's that's quite a change um, to make, and obviously the the results are are quite drastic in terms of what it does to your carry distance. When I mean, we know you normally have it around the two, um, or sorry, around the 300 mark in the carry, yeah. and now you're down at 260. Right. So interesting to see though that the biggest thing that's changed is the uh, the angle of attack uh, has caused your launch obviously to go down, which is good, you know, because your delivered loft has came down. But your uh, your spin rate has uh, has interestingly enough, you know, stayed stayed yeah. down with it. Factor of maybe this club head being a spin reducing yeah. head. I mean, we, we that's the the G four hundred LS tech, uh, so it is trying to kind of keep that spin rate down a little right. bit. So um, probably not the ideal head if you do have those slightly lower launch conditions. We would need that spin to be a fraction higher than that. But the main kind of source we're going to have to lean on to try and get your ball flight back into the you know, 80, 90 feet peak range, it's going to be trying to address the, the, um, launch. the, the launch angle. So the sure. challenge becomes getting launch up without making the spin go up too yes. high. And that's Correct. where people get into some difficulties trying to fit that driver. That's it, trying to balance those two against right. one another. Okay, I want to bring my flight up, but I want to, you know, I, I mm. want to manage the spin. And I don't want that kind of low riser flight right. that you used to see pros get when the, the golf ball was a lot softer than it is today. Um, so, okay. Um, see if there's anything else to touch on with that. Pretty neutral delivery um, from you there, Matty. A uh, fraction out to in, that's just you trying to squeeze it a little bit, which is fine. Delivered loft is a fraction on the lower side, so in an ideal world, that delivered loft is going to be around 18 right. uh, for you. So we so definitely need to get that up. Get that, get that loft yep. up a little bit. So we're going to probably address loft and shaft together. Uh, like we said, we might even throw a ball in there yeah. if, we, if we think there's a ball that might launch uh, up a little bit with us. Because like we talked about, trying to balance that launch coming up but keeping the spin rate down is going to be the key to making this right. up. Right, and we know there's lots fit. of golf ball options that, that do that now, yeah. so, okay. Exactly. All right, let's take a look. All right, Matty, um, so first club we've put in your hands has had quite a nice effect uh, straight out of the yeah. gates. Um, so we've kept the, the same sort of delivery conditions. We're still a little bit down on at one, one and a half degrees or so, uh, but we've, we've managed to nudge that launch angle up two degrees. Uh, so we're now at 9.4 down with a, about just shy of 2300 spin. So we're getting to be decent numbers at this point? Really quite good. I mean, double figures would be our objective with launch, so we're right there. Yep. And in 2300, honestly, that would be, it'd be pro probably the, the kind of objective to try and get that nice balance of, of kind of launch uh, with, right. with kind of flattening out the flight at the top. So um, it's netted you at about 14 yards of, of, uh, of carry distance. So basically how we've done that is, is going to... Um, like we keep talking about these kind of heads with high launch DNA, low launch DNA, or low spin DNA. Right. It's really CG is what, it, what it, yeah. we're playing with. So we went with the 10.5 M3, yep. moved the weights into the, the Brooks Kepka setting. Is that where he has them way back there? It, yep, oh, yep. Okay. In the back toe and the back heel. Yep. Uh, so stabilizing the driver and kind of trying to get that launch up a little bit. Right. So, I mean, there's, there's, there's enough CG, look, you know, a, a forward in that head, enough weight placement forward in that head um, that it's, it's going to keep the sort of spin rate down. You're naturally delivering this with low dynamic, dynamic loft. Off, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the, the biggest thing. It is here, amazing. So. that I mean, we made <clears> quite a... For most people, I think they'd leave and, and be pretty happy with 15 yards of carry and yeah. quite a much more usable ball flight if you look at the side angle way higher definitely a little more controllable as well so well in terms of the height we're, we're looking at a pickup right now we talked about trying to get it into the 80 feet area I mean we we are pretty much where there bar one um, right. so 
Um, we're, we're up around 80 feet right now. Gotcha. So now the question is, can we inch it just that little bit more? Yeah, can, with... can we uh, sneak it a little higher? I mean, knowing, knowing what we do about your ball speed, I think we can maybe get something that's a hair quicker. Gotcha. That's one element where we can raise ball flight through velocity. Yep. Um, obviously, ball, fl ball speed, launch and spin are the three elements we're going to look at here. So, um, yeah, if we can keep kind of plugging that away at the ball speed, nudge the launch up, keep the spin where it is. We're, we're going to be pretty happy at carrying at about 280, going out yeah. to about 310. And so at that ball speed, if you can get over 280 carry, hitting down at two degrees, yeah. you're looking at being basically optimized. Very optimized. You're not going to hit that. it any further unless you change your delivery. Correct, correct, exactly. All yeah. right, let's do it. All right, let's pull that together. Okay guys, um, Matt, nice job on uh, completely messing up your swing and messed around with a little bit, didn't we? Down yeah. on it. Um, <laughs> hope that doesn't have any lasting effects. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't play for a living, You'll so be who fine. cares, right? You'll be just fine. So, I mean, because guys, we're saying that because it, it is not easy to do. It's a little weird, yeah. You know, you hear uh, the, the PGA Tour players when they come back from playing the British Open that their mm. swings are all over the place. That's true. And that's because they're, you know, they're trying to flight the ball down. They're trying to get a, get a little bit more on their lead side and trying to can really manage their loft mm. through the ball so they can hit that penetrating ball flight. And for someone like Matt, who's used to, you know, hitting it nice and high and carrying it a long way, playing very much that North American style golf, right. Uh, that's not an easy thing to do, what we just asked them to do, which is to kind of really, uh, you know, deal off the driver and, and get it down. So, um, I think we got some good averages though. So we were, you know, we were kind of in that one and a half to two degree down range that yep. we talked about. Pretty consistently so, uh, kept it right in, in that yeah. window. And anything that fell out of that, we, we, we just immediately, out, yeah. uh, uh, you know, deleted that, that particular shot. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked a little bit there. We got some nice early improvements from the TaylorMade M3. Yeah, this was quite good. Yeah, with the 2K NV Blue. Um, kind of mid-launch, mid-spin shaft by designation. Um, so it's something I think worth mentioning yeah. is we shallowed the angle mm -hmm. by about half a degree when you went to this shaft versus mine. Yeah. So you mentioned this is slightly softer in the tip section than yours for sure. Than what I'm using. Yeah. So that would allow. Well, let's talk about it this way, mm -hmm. right? It allows the shaft to bend more. More in deflection. Lead, lead deflection. deflection, and so mm -hmm. that gave it a little more loft. Yeah. We 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 assume that's that's <coughs> kind of one of the things that happen again. Right. We without, we, yeah. without you know having our, our gears, you know we will be able to, to measure sort of lead mm. deflection of the shaft when we get gears. So it makes um, it does make sense logically. That 100 percent. Absolutely. I mean, you can influence uh, the the delivery of the golf club through deflection by using uh, different you know bend profiles. Yeah. And at that point, we you know most people would say that pretty good we were improvement close. there. We were happy with that, and then we looked for kind of. What you consider to be dialing it in? What's the last little bit of improvement yeah. you can well, get? Well, I think if, if we, you know, going back to what we, we said we wanted to do in order to hit it a little bit further was increase ball speed a little bit, gets launched to about 10 and spin to about 2400. Exactly. And then, you know, one combination on, we actually, we tried the Callaway Rogue in between yeah. the Rogue. Uh, Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero. Wasn't, wasn't um, kind of all that good for us, no. really trying to kind of get a, uh, a bit of a knuckleball with that one, but we, we never got it. We it was a very low launching driver still, and it, it, wanted, to go, to and it wanted to go left yeah. as well, which with that delivery, for yeah. the most part, you're not hitting down on it and drawing mm. it for the most part. Yeah. People will tend to hit a bit of a fade. That's it, they'll squeeze it and kind of hold the loft uh, a yeah. little more open. I mean, we could say a very incremental improvement over my original over one, Over the original, but we lost 10, uh, nine yards on fly versus the, the tail mid, so it was never going to be good. So. No. You know, we've we kind of went through a couple of the good options there. And then, you know, we, we kind of thought we would, you know, grab one from um, left field a little yeah. bit. And we've grabbed the Cobra F8 Plus. Haven't seen it in a while. Shut the face down, move the weight forward. Some nice adjustability with this one. Yep. Graphite Design DI, a slightly softer profile. 
Um, pretty famous, most of you guys will know that shaft pretty well. Jordan Spieth. Literally could not have got better numbers with that thing. Yeah, and it was immediate. The ability for me, I think, to make, with that delivery, mm -hmm. make better contact. Yeah. Um, and just, I guess, the consistency of the flight. Obviously, the extra loft helped the, the launch angle. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the weight forward must have controlled the spin to some degree. Push so that CG forward a little bit. We found a nice balance, and the shaft mm -hmm. um, complemented that quite well. One thing happened that, that always happens when you, you hand someone the right one in a fit, your demeanor completely mm. changed. Um, you made a comment that how easy it felt to hit. You know, yeah. this one feels like I can swing it faster. Yeah. The, the reason you swing it fast is because you're so comfortable with it. You expect so it to go straight. That's it. Yeah. So, you know, the shaft, the way it's unloading and loading is, is, uh, is, is matching your time and everything just feels really comfortable. And of course, you can access a little bit more speed right. when you're that comfortable. So um, that one was, was, it was out of the park. Uh, so it was another, another two miles an hour ball speed over the tail made, another half a degree of launch and uh, another 150 RPMs of spin, which is... Yeah which is incremental uh, difference, but we'll take it. Well, and exactly. So incremental over the TaylorMade, which was quite good, yeah. but massive, massive improvement over what I would have walked in right. with, yes. with that, my delivery yep. and my driver. Yeah, so if you've walked in there and you've kind of went, you know, I'm really not, you know, not, I don't feel like my driver right now is optimized, mm. Ian, like, uh, I'm, I'm kind of like show the, the, the difference there between the two yeah, flights. Yeah, that's the story. You go, well, you know, okay, you're hitting it quite nice, Matt. You know, 294 is quite good, but how about 19 more yards in the can air? Carry. Yeah, so that you can guarantee the distance. I mean, that's a lot to hand it someone. Is. And ground conditions, we should mention, especially where we live. Yeah. You get a soft day. Yeah, that's right. That 260 is not rolling 34 yards. No I chance. don't care, you know, how low it goes. No so chance. the carry with the balance, you've yeah. got 2400 spin, it's still mm -hmm. going to roll. Uh, I would expect to see that driver more than 11 yards total distance by it on average on, in a real world situation. Easy. Yeah. yeah, easy. Quite nice. Yeah, so two and a half degrees more launch and about 500 more, uh, more uh, spin. Yeah, and, st and straighter. Very straight, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's the other thing that we always yeah. talk about. You know, when we add that little bit extra spin, we do, we do hit the driver quite a lot straighter when, yep. we, uh, when we have the right amount of spin. I mean, you know, obviously going lower spin gives us the ability to, to kind of make the ball kind of go further, but also further offline. Yeah, this was really interesting. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, uh, this wasn't a traditional fitting. You fit an alter ego of my own swing, but sure. it's, it's different though, right? Yeah. Like I took a driver that normally is perfect for mm -hmm. one delivery, changed that delivery and suddenly that driver is no good. And mm -hmm. this driver wouldn't fit me with my regular swing because it's too much loft Definitely. and now it's perfect. I think, and this is, this is the type of fit our guys in here face all the time, mm -hmm. the player who, who comes in here t t generally is a little bit steeper or has right. a little bit of kind of you know unique launch conditions or delivery yeah. conditions and you know this is the type of uh, this is the type of improvements we see in uh, see in here day in day out. So um, if you are struggling out there, you know with with a specific ball flight, whether it's ballooning it too much, spinny, or or you can't quite flight it up enough, yeah. you know there's probably some solutions and equipment that you can get that that aren't just about a re, uh, an overhaul of your swing and re, yeah. redoing everything about your delivery. So um, Your main points, just as the takeaways, yeah. if you weren't gonna go Cobra, the main things you did was you, you got more loft mm -hmm. and you got the weight and CG location forward. forward. Yep. So that combination of two kind of Higher raise launch, launch and launch spin. spin, that's yeah. the thing. Gotcha. Yep. Very cool. Cool. I think that's going to be an awesome takeaway. Yeah, excellent. No, I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of people watching this with a little light bulb going off. Uh, Hope and, so, yeah. And, yeah, and that's, that's go, you know, giving them some impetus to go out and maybe try uh, try a fit somewhere, wherever, yeah. kind of locally, that, that they can get access to this type of equipment. Absolutely. Definitely. Great stuff. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.